night with the dead who cannot die. Hello, and welcome to The Warp Shelf. I'm Frank Duran. I'm Deshaun Vasquez. And today, we are raising the dead. Or, more like, raising the question... Of why are these things dead? Uh, we are going to take a look at some dead video game franchises. Uh, a look back at ooh, some of our favorite series that are no longer with us. The, yeah, or just seem to be dormant for some reason with no no no, <laughs> no hints or hopes in the horizons. So th- this this episode might make you like internally angry, and that's an okay feeling. You're gonna hear some of these and be like, right. I haven't played a fucking blah, blah, blah game, a Castlevania game, in fucking forever, you know? Like, <laughs> And you're just like, wait a minute, like, wh- uh, what's going on here? And we're going to go through some of our favorites here. If you, if we don't mention one, please put it down in the comments below. We want to hear about it. We'll talk about it with you on our Facebook page, our, our Twitters, or anything else. So I'm uh, sure please, there's plenty uh, that we won't mention. Please ca- comment down below and let us know. Uh, and uh, so, first off, what's our first on this list here? Conquer. Conquer? Yeah. Uh, con- yeah, Conquer's bad for a day, and Conquer's series in general is a credibly unused franchise. Yeah, it's just, like. uh, it's just a game. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, a, it's like... A, it's like Bad Fur Day reinvented it because there was a brief game like right before it that was more like cartoony and stuff like that. Then yeah. Bad Fur Day just immediately went adult. Exactly. And then aside from that, it's mostly been nothing. There was a remake of the N64 game on the Xbox Live and Reloaded. But aside from that, it's just been kind of just nothing. <laughs> it's just what, sitting on gold. It's what, yeah, it's one of those series that like in a world where uh and, 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 and the south park is still thriving mm-hmm. you know like you wonder why a a video game series with with this type of reputation is not out doing something you know like and there's i feel like there's definitely going to be a pattern on this episode of just like rare games in general like <laughs> Microsoft just sitting on gold and not utilizing it after they bought Rare. Yep, they're just like... They bought Rare and then didn't have had no idea how to actually use them when they got them. They're like, oh, is that bad? Do we need to do anything with this? Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so, I mean, Conquer, uh, I, I played it a bit back in my day, but it was one of those games that my mom did not want me to play. So I did not own it. <laughs> it was one of those games because I never, like... I didn't own an N64 as a kid until, like, way later, and then, like, did some catch-up. My cousin had it, and we went over there. They lived in Vermont, went to go visit, and we played it all day and, like, went through the whole thing, and my parents didn't give a fuck. (laughs) And even if they did and didn't allow me to, I was just going to find out how to play it anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, next up on the list, what do we got? I have, and these aren't really in any particular order. No, not order, in any particular order. Is uh, Destroy All Humans. Destroy All Humans. I, I really enjoyed Destroy All Humans. It's I, a unique humor. Yeah, I loved the first two games and then just kind of missed out after that because I think Path of the Furon was the third game. I think that might have only been on the Wii. Yeah. And I never owned a Wii myself. That was always my brother's console. Uh. And then it just kind of, that was it. Yeah. It definitely, part of the uh, problem with that is that it was a game by uh, Pandemic, who also yeah. did like the original two Battlefront games, and then they got bought by EA, <laughs> and then they went under. <laughs> so, but we are getting a remake. Uh, yeah, the first we're getting, Destroy yeah, because it was a THQ game originally, yeah. and THQ got dissolved and absorbed into the new con- uh, company, THQ Nordic. Yeah. So they're bringing uh, the first game back with a brand new remaster. Which, which I'm wicked excited yeah, about. Well, like, I can't wait. I, I can't wait, because it was... It, it's such a funny game. Mm. There's there's nothing else that will give you pure joy than like sucking up cows and then shooting them out or yeah, like <laughs> dragging cows around in a UFO or like killing humans to take their brain stems. Where it's literally like an anal probe weapon. <laughs> You're like, this is great. Mm. And plus, it's got like hilarious um, like fifties humor of like yeah. everyone's just repressed. <laughs> <laughs> really funny stuff. And I really think that 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 it's. Uh, if the remake sells well, maybe we'll get yeah, a new one. Yeah, maybe either a sequel or they'll just like remaster at least the next two games yeah. to have them. Exactly. It's definitely... A remaster is usually always there to just be like, so do you want something else? Yeah, dude. You so better do you want get this. this one? Do you want this one? Yeah. <laughs> 
You want the next one? <laughs> Pay money. <laughs> Pay me money. Pay me money. Let's see if this franchise is really dead or not. Yeah. So let's say... And that's especially say... too with, true with the studio THQ Nordic. Yeah. Is that the problem with their... They have all these great licenses, but they also have to contend that they're not a giant studio. So if something doesn't go well, mm-hmm. they're not going to keep doing it. You yeah. know, like, and they're just kind of walk away. Like, like, t- like I like a lot of their games, but I always point to Titan Quest. They had Titan Quest on, mm-hmm. on Switch, and it's terrible, and it's still broken. And, like, <laughs> it's one of those things that they just didn't make enough money off it, so they were kind of like, <laughs> eh, it, you know, like, it's broken, whatever. So I would away. say that Destroy All Humans is... Not dead, but on life support. <laughs> yes, not dead on my life support. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, what's next on the list? Uh, this one's near and dear to my heart is Fable. Oh yeah, I, oh, I also love Fable, but more importantly, Fable Two. I, I loved was a huge Fable Two. The fan. first two games. Yeah, loved Fable One, adored Fable Two, did not like Fable Three at all. <laughs> Fable Three was a broken mess. It was one of those games that my brother played a lot, and it it made me and my dad laugh mm-hmm. just watching the game because it was so ridiculous yeah. all the time. You know, like it was just like, oh look what oh, I man. can do. Oh uh, man, Fable Two. I put so many hours into that game. I had like f- I did like five different playthroughs because i want to do this time i want to go this path i'm gonna do this path i'm gonna have like 12 kids so i'm gonna try to collect all the stds because you can literally go to like yeah. brothels and contract stds and it shows up on your stats yeah, you're like oh, how yeah. many stds you have it's just like let's reach for 20 <laughs> just ridiculous it's ridiculous and uh they've had so it's it's one of those games that they obviously are interested in keep going because I know there was a tactics game that they yeah, came out with there, sort there of was, recently. Yeah, and there was also like an MMO that they were trying to do that went under. But I think yeah. the big problem is is that Lionhead, the studio that made them, is just gone now. It's been, yeah, yeah, it's out. It's out. So it's kind of like uh, <laughs> like so. so it's, who it's, even knows at this point? Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those game series that I don't like, know if I we'll got... ever get more. It's kind of like Payday Heist with Star Breeze. You know, I it's kind of like we'll never get Payday Three mm-hmm. because we'll never. I, that shouldn't be on this list because Payday Two is it. Well, I mean, I like Payday Two, but mm-hmm. like most people do not. But like, but I would love a. Uh, uh, and that's a series we'll never see again because the ser- the the company has been uh, uh, not only uh, folded and under, mm-hmm. but they were arrested. <laughs> Like a lot wow. of the CEOs are arrested for like bank stuff and uh Ooh, whoops. And yeah, you can look it up. You no, know, given, and, <laughs> given and, the and, content of payday. Yeah, yeah, it's very ironic. Really? You're like, That's Ooh. hilarious. But they yeah, you could it's one of those things where we're probably never gonna get another mm. one. It's kind of, and and that kind of leads right into another series that a company has gone bankrupt and we'll probably never see again is the tell tale series i feel yeah, like um we're getting the end of it but it's like this is something we're literally watching a series die in real time and like, they're also but they're also slowly crawling their way back up yeah a little because bit but with walking dead that just went to robert kirksman's uh company like he owns the rights to walking dead so he's just like you know what my company will finish it yeah but but the wolf among us too is still coming really yeah that was actually a big surprise at the game awards <laughs> that they showed another trailer for it's like it's still coming i'm like well i hope so because i love the first wolf among <laughs> us it got me into reading all the fables so hopefully the and whole- it still says like a telltale game series so i'm like okay yeah. so i guess you and the 10 staff that you have left are just <laughs> finishing it up for us what's going on what's going on out there yeah it's kind of like one of those things where it's just like companies once they go under it's kind of like what what happens you mm-hmm. know like and it's it's it, telltale is an interesting one to like watch in real time because it's it's literally a game series just being like put out of its misery slowly yeah. out of us and you're like oh my god <laughs> like, uh, i think their big problem was that they just kept grabbing too many like big ips and they never really like advanced the formula yeah. like and that was a big complaint was that the game started to feel like real samey even though they were still fun i played a lot of them yeah Wolf but Among if you played fun. but the thing is if you have repeat fans coming back because of telltale game and then it's the same game but yeah. with a different reskin you're kind of like and there was also one of those things where, like, the older games tended to be a little longer, too, and the new games got a little shorter because yeah. you could tell they were pumped out a lot faster. 
So it was all sort of, sort of just like it was all going to come to a head at some yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too bad. They're, um, I think their next big IP was actually going to be a Stranger Things game. Oh, you yeah. You can actually nice. find like um, like unfinished footage of like what it was going to look like. It's like, damn, that would have been a real good fit for them. Yeah. But, uh... Oh, well. Oh, well. So, uh, moving on, what's next up on the list? So this one's interesting because it's just a genre. Let's just say the <laughs> RTS genre in like, general. Yeah, Jesus Christ. No, it's really true, though. Like, uh, if you have to look for a good RTS... A lot of major studios are not making them anymore, mm-hmm. you know? Like, so, what are the three... There's several games here we have on the list which are RTSs. Mm-hmm. We have Command & Conquer. Yeah, and then there was Age of Empires. Age of Empires. And then... I don't know. There's a, quite a few. There's quite a few. You can even argue sub-series that, like, get an a- RTS um, spinoff, like, say, like, Halo Wars. Yeah. And, where, like, that went nowhere. Exactly. It, it's it's kind of a whole genre that's dying. But it's you know? so like, it's such a niche genre. It's ironic because it was definitely a it was definitely a genre for PC players. Yeah. But given how much bigger the PC market has become, it's interesting that it's actually started to like wean off. Down. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's 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 interesting. The big studios backed away, mm-hmm. you know, like and it's uh, a lot of indie studios have stepped up. There's some good stuff out there. There's some good oh. fun indie RTS games, but there's no like triple A like event type RTSs anymore. The closest thing you get is just like whenever a new civilization comes out. And Age of Empires and Command and Conquer are two series that are just incredible and so much fun and it's wild that like I spent mo- I spent a lot of my childhood playing those games and like and now they don't happen at all. You yeah, know? and like, you never really there's never really the demand for them. It doesn't have the same hype or perpetual like excitement that other genres do. Yeah, and and, and, and like I I kind of get it because it's it's a certain thing. It's like it's kind of a nerdy genre on top of our already you're doing a nerdy thing. Yeah. But like at the same time, I have always loved an RTS. I always have loved Every the, the Warhammer four thousand, you know, like I forty you know, k forty k, yeah, <laughs> like it's like I love those type of games, and I want more of them. I'm really sick of. I have an article on uh, on Galaxy and Geek where I talk about RTSs on mm-hmm. Switch, and because uh, there's not many, and uh, they, they they've added a few since I wrote that article because mm-hmm. I wrote that back in like 2017 and 2018, but like. It's one of those things where you're kind of like, what? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, and I I guess I sort of get it. It's, again, like, when you think of that genre, you think it's going to be on a computer. Yeah. You play it on a computer. It's a keyboard and mouse type game. And maybe that's why the consoles have taken over, really, and, like, and they're not going to make a non-console game that can't be on console and PC. But I feel like the, but I feel like the genre would actually be fairly compatible especially if you leaned into te- the technology for a switch oh yeah if you made oh, yeah. if you made an rts With, game that, that had spe- touch screen yeah that was specifically made for the switch it's true. in mind With civ 6 i think works great mm-hmm. I, I and i feel like there's lots of other games that just but imagine work. an rts like made for it specifically specifically yeah. and that that would take a nintendo being like hey <laughs> you know, like, here's an actual RTS, you know, like, instead. We'll, we'll just make it a spinoff of one of our other games. What's a... Fire Emblem RTS. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> now that you've said it, it'll probably happen. It'll probably happen. That seems, about, yeah, that seems like the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's almost what happens in Fire Emblem Warriors. It almost feels mm-hmm. like an RTS, because you're, like, in real time sending people out to get things. But, like... At the same time, you're just—it's like, not the full on. It's like, not the full on god thing. god yeah. point of view. No, it's definitely it's like not moving all your pieces on the board. No, and that's what I loved. Mm-hmm. I always loved being like, okay, what's my next move? And I always loved playing another person, like me and my versus my brother playing RTS. That's it's always fun to play it's, against another person. Too. It's a uh, part of the reason of all things. Soul Calibur Three is my favorite in the franchise. <laughs> One of the reasons it actually has like a full on RTS like mode that's what? like a game within the game. What? Yeah, I didn't know that. It's a whole ass mode called Chronicles of the Sword where you take the custom characters that you've made <laughs> in the char- character creation system and you straight up is just like, here's a full on RTS campaign where you could play with the characters you made. Have fun. 
What? I never just, played that. It was just a thing. thing. It was just fuck? a thing. It wasn't. It was just a game within the game. They just Jesus. added that. It was great. Jeez. And uh, the the other thing that I I feel like this is a great transition to with the RTS death is it is one of my favorite series of all time and something I crave for on the daily. I like. I literally am like. I wonder if we could get that back. <laughs> is is Advance Wars? I. Love Advanced Wars. I was a huge fan when it came out on on my handheld. Uh, GBA. GBA. And then moving on to... Uh, it just kept... It, like, I loved the series. I kept playing. I played Black Hole. I played yeah, I remember you that. freaking out back when Smash 4 came out and, like, the Advanced Wars, like, soldiers were an assist trophy. And you're like, ah! <laughs> I did. I freaked out. I loved it. And, I, and it's one of those things that, like, was so important in my childhood and and it's one of those games that like even though I kept losing, I kept coming back, and it was one of those like as a kid, it it, it shaped a lot of like my taste in games. It's one of the reasons why I loved RTSs is because I was like, oh, it's kind of like the Fast Wars, but yeah, it happens heard that. all the time. You've been like, would you bought Wargroove because you were just like, well, you know, it reminds me of Advanced yeah, Wars. Yeah, if you if you're itching for Advanced Wars, that's current, and and you want something that's actually like a complete package, great game, mm-hmm. and that's complete actually being updated all the time they literally just put out a free update that adds two new characters that's two new generals and a bunch of other crazy yeah and like things. new masks and stuff like that yeah, i actually it, saw that the other day it's yeah. wild uh it's wargroove wargroove mm-hmm. has it there's several other games that try to be advanced wars uh tiny metal and several but you other feel games. like this has kind of come the closest yeah, wargroove comes the closest what they lean into though is that instead of current military which is it's what more advanced wars fantasy aesthetic it, it's fantasy aesthetic it's more which is also it's a a, a really charming aspect Mm -hmm. of it you know but i think one of the reasons why i love advanced wars is that it's current you know like Like it was like i'm a tank i'm a fucking bomber i have like ships i have you know like aircraft carriers you know like there was lots of like things that made you go wow that's Mm -hmm. that's really like that's really sick and it's really i really all the time think about like why don't we have the fans more sequel and i feel like that's (laughs) one of those things that like we are playing we are living in a world where the main console in in the nintendo lineup is a handheld and we don't have some sort of like Switch Wars, which is just like Advanced Wars, or whatever you want to fucking call it. Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. terrible title you want to call it, I don't care. Which Give is interesting me that. because, like, the original Advanced Wars game, if I remember correctly, that never even came out in the U.S. I think it was like the sequels that no, came yeah, over here. It's the only sequels that came out yeah. here because the originals is is a, is a straight up war game on the NES, mm-hmm. and then they like spiritually like kept having successors. And then, like, <laughs> so where's our successor now? <laughs> yeah, where's the successor now? As we got. All we have is War Groove, but like Advanced Wars, it's it was about the characters. Mm-hmm. Like it really is. I really enjoyed the characters there. Uh, I think that's what something that War Groove does well too, uh, and why it stands out above the other ones is they finally were like, oh right, this is the other reason why they liked it. Not just the gameplay, but yeah. that you were like, hey, that character's cool. I want to be him. What's his ability? Sick, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's that. It's. It's the reason why I kept coming back to that game. Is that like you love those characters? The reason why you went to the sequels because you like those mm-hmm. characters, you know. And they kept it up. And I wonder if they'll if they do a sequel, if they'll stay with those characters, or if they'll just be like. Ah. I imagine it's been so far out since the Game Boy Advance that. It doesn't matter, you yeah, know. Like it'd probably be like some sort of soft reboot of the franchise or something. Exactly, but I I, I feel like now is the time. Like I uh, in a year where they they uh, there's going to be lots of Switch announce uh, not only announcements but like Switch releases this uh-huh. year. It's a crazy year for games in 2020. But like this, we need it. We we need it. Give me my <laughs> give me my game. Give me my game. This this whole episode is just about being like, hey, please give me advance. We'll see. Bring it back. I want. Bring it, it back. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have next? Uh, Silent Hill. Silent Hill. This is a sad one. This is a real sad one because, oh man, so the original, the first two Silent Hill games are fantastic. And for the most part, aside from, you know, some PS1 jank, (laughs) they hold up relatively well. Like, they are masterclasses in, like, horror storytelling. 
and it was a very different like it was a great contrast to something like Resident Evil like a very different type of horror. exactly and the third one while not great was still solid for what it was the problem is it felt too much like two and sort of undermined two with a lot yeah. of its like inclusions like the pyramid head yeah. Everyone loves the Pyramid Head. Everyone That's loves when Pyramid they think Head. Of Everyone loves Silent Pyramid Head. They think of Pyramid Head. The problem with Everyone the, goes to the con, they're like, hey, it's Pyramid Head. Yeah, the, Everyone loves Pyramid Head. The problem with the Pyramid Head is it was specific to Silent Hill 2. That was a yeah. part of that character's psyche. But then that the Pyramid Head became too iconic for its own good. Yeah, so it, it just was kind in of became, five. It was in like... It just became like a regular thing, even though that was supposed to be just part of his psyche. It was a symbolic yeah. thing. But And then the issue was every Silent Hill after 3 was just... Yeah. And, well, hold on. So there was some on PSP. Which ones were on PSP? Where did they remake two on PSP? I know that like um like at least one and two might have gotten ported. Because I played the only Silent Hills I ever played was on PSP mm-hmm. and it scared the ever living shit out of me when I played it on PSP because you're sitting in the dark in the night and it's real close to your fucking face and you're just like Oh god! <laughs> it's, it's a nurse! Just, and it's coming at me! Like And then the franchise was just kinda like getting worse and worse yeah. and worse. And then we finally get a glimmer of hope with PT. Yeah. Such like an immersive, creepy fever trip of a demo that was just a taste. And she's like, just okay, taste. secret demo. It's for actually for Silent Hills. It's like, ah, you aliens did. That's uh, cute. Uh, yeah. This looks like it's going to be great. Kojima's working on this son of a bitch. Oh, Guillermo del Toro is what? This is great. This is going to be nuts. This is going to be good. And he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. That's where the timeline went wrong, guys. Yeah. Is, is, it was when... It, uh, is that like the... Is that it, moment. That's the Everyone point. thinks it was Trump being like, it wasn't. It was that. It, it was, was that moment. That was the focal point <laughs> in time. It was the focal point in time is when all of a sudden PT not being actually made into a full game being and, is a crime oh man, against and humanity. That, that became like a whole like domino effect for Konami yeah. because it was because of that then that affected MGS5 not being really as complete as it could have been nope. and like Kojima fought, having a huge falling out with them and them leaving so ugh, what are you doing Konami <laughs> and then they just keep digging that dead grave with mm-hmm. Metal Gear too busy doing pachinko machines and <laughs> Metal Gear spinoffs no one wants. <laughs> but, it, it, yeah, is there other Konamis on this list? Because they killed a lot of franchises. I mean, we could talk like, about Castlevania. Yeah, and yeah, and Castlevania is another crime against Which humanity. Which is a shame, because Castlevania had, like, a lot of life on handheld. And, and it's got life right now. We're on the second season of a Netflix show that's yep. one of the most watched Netflix shows on the service. It's the only good video game adaptation that <laughs> exists. He said it. He said it, guys. Did you hear it? The only good video game adaption. Yeah. It's it may be true though. Uh and by maybe true, I mean very fucking close. Like <laughs> and, like cuz Yeah. But like Castlevania was doing great on the DS. Like they had yeah. all the like Symphony of the Night style Metroidvania style games and they kept pumping those out, pump those out. And those were all Fun. They weren't as good as Symphony of the Night, but they were yeah. all fun. And then we got Lords of Shadow, which is like, all right, we're getting into sort of God of War territory, yeah. which is fine. It could still feel like its own thing, but meh. And then the second one came out, and it was just even further, meh. meh. Just doesn't really feel like Castlevania anymore. And then silence from that point forward. Yeah. And now we are in a world where we have a Netflix Castlevania show mm-hmm. like and and a and several other Castlevania type games. Type I mean, games. we have Bloodstained. Yeah, and it's like one of those things where it's like people obviously want this type of game like uh like there's so dead cells is another big hollow cell hollow knight uh steam world dig uh it, it, they're both games are great metrovanias it's like the king is literally not sitting on his throne you know it's like so odd. And, and and there's no news of of one being worked on it's like, like that and arguably metroid for the just that type of exactly game. that's why they metroid, call it metroidvania yeah, it is, and at but, least we know metroid metroid's coming yeah we know prime 4 is in development and even then we had samus returns on the 3ds so exactly. it's not completely dead it did take a while yeah which I, I don't know why we don't have a port of that on Switch. Just like a literal, just yeah, like considering here's that fucking it was like, Samus Returns. Considering it was so late into the 3DS's life cycle, I don't understand that at all. But, You're just like it was literally like 
so deep into the Switch cycle that you were kind of like, why can't we do Not both? Not so much deep because the Switch had like just come out, but it's just one of those things. And that's a whole other can yeah, of worms. I don't mind... Good. Just because the Switch is out, you can still make 3DS games if you no, want. No, I, I don't. I, I'm not it's against good to that. It. I'm just thinking that it like because of this, you, like you, a it's, big IP. It's the point of the Switch is that everything's handheld yeah. now. It's like that's the weird thing about this 3DS hanging about is that it, it it's it's like everything's handheld now, and if you don't put it on both the Switch. And the 3DS, I really don't understand. You know, like, I'm just like, ah. Yeah, it's odd. I'm wondering if Nintendo at some point will make a peripheral like they did for the GameCube, like a game, or the Super NES, will they make it like a Game Boy Player equivalent, but for the DS and 3DS, for the Switch, that'd be cool. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's happened before. It's happened before. Uh, I, I mean, it's definitely possible. Uh, I, I, I more think that... Coming up, we're going to have a Switch Pro, and that's going to open up a lot of different mm-hmm. things. I think that's coming this year, is them being like, buy the Switch Pro. This <laughs> one can play the 3DS. I'm like, shit, man. You miss shit, motherfucker. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that will lead to a lot of other things, because mm-hmm. they'll be powerful enough to do a bunch of different things. And, and already, we already have so many ports going over because of Unreal Engine being so easy to port things over. Yeah, certainly. So it's just like... We'll see it, but we're we're getting lost in 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 the weeds here. But like Castlevania, it's one of those series that's that literally defines a genre. Like mm-hmm. we literally say Metroidvanias, and like it's kind, it's real dumb that in a world where Netflix is succeeding in a Castlevania series, and it's that doing there's not like an immediate game to go towards it. And yeah. I've seen it happen. My brother is super into the and to the. Well, it's not really an anime, but let's not go down yeah, that road. Not go He's down super road. into the um, Netflix show, and he was just like, I really want to play a Castlevania game now. He's just like, well, there's no recent ones. <laughs> I had to like point him to the PlayStation Store. He's like, I mean, you can you can buy Symphony of the Night. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, you can hey. buy the Castlevania collection that just came out, but that's pretty much your only bet. There's no like new stuff, though. Sorry. Yeah, which, like, it's nice that we have the Castlevania collection. I'm not going to lie, but like at the same time, it's kind of like, why is this one of those franchises that's not being worked on all the time? You yeah, know, it's like, gotten to the point where the director of Symphony of the Night is just like, all right, if you're not going to make it, then I'll make it somewhere else. It, it's like, it, it's one of those things that's as as iconic as a Mario, a Link, a Sonic, uh, you know, like, a, 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 it's one of those iconic video game things. You wonder why somebody's not working on exactly. something. But uh moving on this one's gonna mainly be you it's medal of honor medal of honor i i'm i'm a big fan of of uh, history (laughs) that sounds stupid but like i'm a big history buff and i really loved medal of honor as a kid um i when i'm talking about playing rts's and playing uh medal of honor fps's as a kid we had this place called Holodeck in my town where you would go and you'd pay money for like an hour or two hours and you could play any of the game systems. They had like projectors set up. So like you were, everybody was mm-hmm. playing on different systems and they were just giant screens. And it really like was formative for me for being like, wow, like this is great. This is like amazing. And uh, at Medal of Honor was one of the games I played there all the time. And then I bought it when I had an Xbox. Uh, and uh, it's just so sick to play through actual historic events. Like I, Call of Duty stepped away from that. They're like, we're going to do the future. We're going to be modern. Like, and I, and, and I know Battlefield came back to it. But uh, – I really miss the historically accurate action, like yeah, FPS's, and more in that, you know, like I miss sort that of style. Yeah, exactly. I want I want these these stories to be told and me to see these actual events that happen. You mm-hmm. know, instead of it being like we're trying to make up a story. You know, like sometimes. The better story is just going through what actually fucking happened. Yeah, which is something that I feel like Battlefield and Call of Duty definitely had at the beginning, but then yep. they became too big for their own good, so it became less about the authenticity and more just about fun, money, just, just the ridiculousness <laughs> of it all. Fun and money, yeah. <laughs> and and I'm nothing against them, but uh, fun and money. And, <laughs> and uh, Medal of Honor, I would I would re- like a like Medal of Honor resurgence. 
that is super accurate, super beautiful, like... Like, yeah, they tried to bring it back last gen with the uh, 360 and PS3, but it didn't work out. Yeah, like no one really liked it, and 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 it still might be that's the case is that mm-hmm. we'll never see a Medal of Honor again because there is that many FPSs now, and you got to kind of shine in a market. That's yes, that's so hard to shine. There's a, like first person shooters are a dime a dozen, and when Battlefield One wasn't the bigger hit that it could have been Mm -hmm. you know like i mean it was a hit but it was it wasn't like bang busters Mm -hmm. like you know like you you kind of wonder about the the casual fans want for historical accuracy over the ridiculousness of a bigger faster gun you know like and absolutely sure I, i guess but at the same time i really enjoy being able to shoot a fucking m1 grand you know and it feel <laughs> and it feel realistic mm-hmm. you know like uh, i always Back when your tools that. were limited my tools were limited but yeah i really i miss medal of honor and I, as much as i i am um, i'm more of an fps fan than you are but uh, uh yeah certainly it, it takes some like selling to get me into an fps because there's just so many of them <laughs> And not many of them really bring anything new to the table. Yeah. I usually gravitate more towards first person games that have more of an RPG element towards them. Like, say, the Bethesda games, which you can also switch to third person, yeah. but you know what I mean. Or even like the Deus Ex games. But other than that, I'd rather go for just like pure adrenaline and just sort of more arcadey old school type stuff. That's why I loved the Doom reboot and the reboot of Wolfenstein. True, yeah. true. Those are those are fantastic FPSs. But okay, moving on. What's uh, up on the list? Guh, guh, banjo, banjo, yeah, banjo kazooie. Uh, so. The only inkling we've gotten of anything from Banjo Kazooie since Xbox 360's Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts, fucking what fuck? Yeah. Uh, instead of saying Banjo Three, like God damn it, why didn't you do what everyone the closest knew thing we've you gotten were? is Banjo being in Smash? Yes, that's it. That's it. That's all you get. Which, like, to be fair, he looks good in Smash, man. Yeah, he looks like, great. He looks good. But, like, you see how well that did, and you kind of go, well, well, where's that? You know, like, where, yeah. you know, like, where's, where is a Nintendo Switch Banjo 3 or whatever you want to call it? Was, it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a thing with Smash because you could argue the same for, like, Simon and Richter being in Smash with there's, like, no new decent Castlevania game. Exactly. And yeah, that's my other others, argument yeah. is that, like, the, the, both of those sold so well in the game, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it was just, like, one of those things. Oh, yeah, there was, like, a, there was a demand for a Belmont in Smash since, like, back on Brawl. Exactly. That was, like, the one character I, like, wanted because they've given me everything else I want. I'm starting to run <laughs> out of characters that I actually really, really want now. And I think Simon Belmont might have been the last one. <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, I think the Give only me other Master one. Chief. The only other one I would like freak out about is if they put like Crash in it or something. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. I would. I would like. Crash. That would totally work. Spyro would also <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, but it would be Crash. <laughs> I love Spyro too. I was always more of the Spyro kid, but Crash was always the more popular yeah. one. Now, would you qualify Crash as a dead series, dead franchise? Because uh, that's an interesting. Because we got the remaster. Yeah, we got the remaster. And we just got the remaster of the cart games too. Yeah, I would say um, maybe more than life support. I think there's hope and I for think it's, it. It's been shot in the leg and, and it's walking, but it's not like doing so well. Yeah, <laughs> and the interesting thing about the remaster, especially on Crash's end for the Insane trilogy, is that they added. Um, their own original stage. So yeah, for, as yeah. DLC. That's so that's cool. definitely like Activision being testing the waters, being like, maybe we could do this. Yeah, we could do another. Like, every, you guys game. love this, and we made it. We polished it up for you. Let's see if we could do our own original <laughs> stages, and they were good. So it's just like maybe we'll make a new game. <laughs> maybe. maybe they're very like cautious about it. Now, would you qualify Spyro as a dead series? Because of course, we got Ignited Trilogy, oh, man. but there's... I would uh, say yes, because Spyro did not... Even with Skylanders. At, Skylanders is dead. After, you know? um... I mean, Spyro was dead to me after the PS1. Yes. I mean, yeah. After that, like, it was just a shit show from that point on. Enter the Dragonfly was 
a broken mess that was never finished. Like, A Hero's Tale was sort of a soft, soft reboot that no one wanted. And then The Legend of Spyro was like a hard reboot that yeah. really no one wanted. <laughs> no one looked at Spyro and wanted to turn into an epic fantasy trilogy, okay? Yeah, you're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, I mean, that's definitely one of those, one of my favorite game series that just kind of... Yeah, and got I think that's... Got to death, you know, like, and, and it's got no, like, nobody's saying where's Spyro, which is kind of why. Yeah, you know, because like, all it really had was those first three games, unlike Crash, where Crash did eventually go downhill, but it still lasted a little bit. Wrath of the Cortex was solid, flawed, but solid. Twin yeah. Sanity was good. And it's it still kept it still kept going it still kept going it didn't like immediately just like as soon as the PS one era was done yeah, just like fall like, flat Bruh. on its face like Spyro did. Except Skylanders did really well to shot until don't they care. don't exist anymore. <laughs> you have no idea how salty I was about like Spyro being like tied to Skylanders <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it makes sense. You're just like, oh, no, that's a cool sp- Spyro stand. Why is he weird looking? And then you're like, like, oh, wait, Skylanders. Skylanders, that's not what I want. I want an actual Spyro game. Well, you know, it's for kids. Fuck them kids. <laughs> this is my character, not theirs. <laughs> but uh, but to be fair, it is like a kid's game. You yeah. know? Like, but at the same time, I definitely love Spyro. I, 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 I had a great trilogy, time yeah. with it. Reignited does... I don't think that means we're getting another... Yeah, I would like, doubt it. I that's would not what I got the impression of. Crash from, seems reignited. Yeah, Crash seems far more likely. Because you said there's a new level. There's nothing new mm-hmm. in Ignited. Like I like the the reignited series, but there's nothing they changed. There's not other than like yeah, other bringing than like, mechanics from yeah, two to one, like cleaning up the mechanics and like making it a little smoother to play. Yeah. And, you know, the new voice acting, obviously, yeah. bring back fan favorites. And I will say that I like that the Reignited Trilogy has more work put into it to update, like, the models yeah. and the designs than uh, Reign- than uh, the Insane Trilogy did. And that's mostly because a lot of the old models for Spyro were way more, like, out there yeah. and abstract. Yeah. And just, like, you would just have, like, dudes that just look like mouths with eyes on them. <laughs> and you're just like, I guess I'll interpret it as this. <laughs> So they had a lot more room to just, like, reinvent the wheel. Exactly. and uh, But I really do not think that there's more Spyro coming, which is actually kind of a sad thing. But I feel like it takes a small good team to pull out a Sonic Mania for something mm-hmm. like that that's what they would need yeah. is a spyro mania you know i'm i'm, I'm meaning that as yeah like i know a, what you mean you, you know what i mean i hope people know what i mean is that they need that like somebody going back to basics to win this back yeah. you know like so what's that next up on the list who i got here mega man mega man mega man so this is a lot of series that are not going anywhere when you're talking Mega Man. <laughs> well, know? I guess sort of. Except for Mega Man 11. We got Mega yeah, Man 11. Yeah, we got 11. Mega Man 11. It's got good. Mega Man 11. It's so good. Like, Thank God. It's yeah. good. But so when we're talking Mega Man, we're talking X has not had a series. Well, pretty much any of Mega Man's like sub series are like dead are in the water. Dead. We got X. Battle Network, which is the only one I'll talk about. <laughs> and it's the only uh, one he knows about. And uh, Legends. Legends. Uh, and so, yes. So, I have never played those other ones. I'm not actually a huge Mega Man fan when it comes to any other game except for Battle Network. Mm-hmm. Believe that, no, I have like two other people I know who are like this too. And I want to strangle them too. <laughs> <laughs> like, all I care about is Battle Network. So, it's like, yeah, that's fine. I like Battle Network too. I played like three versions in a row. Had a lot of fun with it. But there's more. This franchise is more than just Battle Network. God damn it! Yeah, but I'm not a platform lover. So and and uh, and Mega Man prides itself on being like, oh, you like the platform? Fuck you! Jump and shoot! <laughs> Jump and shoot, man! And I really love the RPG elements. The bo- like the kind of board game, the grid based like RPG, grid based RPG. Plus the cards. Yeah, the cards were fun. As a kid, I had. The actual chips that you could put into a little scanner mm-hmm. that was in the game, like you know, like and you could train Mega Man by walking him around, like it was like yeah, a Tamagotchi, like, like it was weird, but also made me be like, I love this so much. But yeah, like it's just been because even before Eleven came out, there was just like silence. Yeah, complete nothing silence on the franchise. Yeah, that's why everyone was like Mighty Number no. Nine. Wow. And then everyone was like, oh, <laughs> mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Go back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much 
It, that's why Mega Man 11 was such a... Like, yeah, I guess Mega it's Man, a godsend. You yeah, know? Like, Mega Man 11 was good. I think it's uh, certainly more creative than 10 or 11, or rather 9 and 10 were. Like, 9 was cute because it went back to the 8-bit style, yeah. but that was something you should have only done once. The fact that 10 did it too was like, okay, guys. Okay. <laughs> like, calm down. Now, uh, now, would you want a Z sequel or a Legend sequel more? You mean an X? An X. Sorry, I said Z, but uh, um, I meant the Z from X. <laughs> I would I say thinking. Legends because Legends only had like two games and a spinoff. Okay. And I feel like it could really use like a third modern game. Whereas while the X series is like my favorite version of Mega Man, it had eight games and a spinoff. Yeah. And like I don't really need one. Whereas I feel like there's sort of untapped potential in making another Legends game. Yeah. I I I, uh, I feel like there's it's one of those things that's super weird that the, this is an iconic character. One of those things that you kind of know will sell. So it's kind of wild we don't have a bunch of spinoffs but, from hey, the from main there. series got another entry and it was good. So I mean that's a start. It's a start. But I, I don't know about all the other side series that go with it. You're kind of like, what? And then speaking of in a similar vein to like Banjo or the Belmonts in Smash, you got Mega Man in Smash 4 yeah. at a time when there was nothing for Mega nothing. Man. And it was so sad. It was just like, wow, look at how Nintendo treats our boy more so than Capcom. <laughs> Yeah, all Capcom's this like attention like, to detail and love and just that final smash in general with all the versions of Mega Man doing that yeah. super beam you're like ah <laughs> the love and respect that they have for him <laughs> it's true it's true and it's sad because it's just a, it's it, Mega Man's a classic and yeah, you're kind of like why, why? And especially in a world where people literally go to concerts to hear Mega Man music, you know, mm -hmm. like you go to VGO where you go to see like 8 bit big band or yeah. somebody else who, like, uh, there's so many bands who do like Mega Man music, and you're just kind of like, w what? It's <laughs> like, iconic, so why isn't it getting the respect it deserves? But again, at least it's not completely dead in the water because yes. we did just have a recent so, game. So, this is definitely one that's like missing a limb. Let's say it's like if we're if we're equating these series to being dead, like <laughs> this one's like missing an arm uh, and a leg, so it's in a wheelchair. Like you would say, Mega Man is just kind of it's, like, it's functioning. It's functioning. It can do things, but it's missing <laughs> like literally one side of its body. Yeah, like and uh, it, it's kind of sad to see. Uh, but uh, what's is there anything else on the list? This, oh got? yeah, there's oh, more okay. on the list. Okay, good. We got uh, one that's near and dear to my heart is. Uh, Ape Escape. Oh, yeah. Ape Escape. Definitely. I, I have played this game, but it's definitely one of those games that I just loved because it was super cute and had a good time. Ape with. Escape 1 is one of my favorite like platformers, period. Nice. And 2 and 3 are good. I don't think they ever really came to the same like level of quality that the first game did. Just that same polish. But they were always fun. But then they made like three. They only made like three games and like a couple spinoffs, and then that was kind of it. Even yeah. though they were huge in Japan. Yeah. And even last last year was the first game's twentieth anniversary, and the company that made them even made like a big thing about it. It's just like ah, oh, share your ape escape memories. It's just like yeah, but where's another fucking game? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? It's just you like, know what are you guys doing over here? It just makes it worse that you're like celebrating the 20th anniversary but you have nothing to show for it i'll even just take a remaster of the first game just yeah. give me something which i i'm surprised we haven't had an ape escape on switch it feels like an ape escape would fit especially in a world where we get um what's the hd banana blitz uh you're talking about uh super monkey ball super monkey ball in a world where we get super monkey ball like you know like where's my ape escape yeah you know like i don't know if it would actually because I don't know if, like, Sony owns that Yeah, I think Sony it tends might to own only it. be on I Sony, Sony consoles. I mean, that was the game... That was the first game on PS1 that was required for you to have a DualShock with two yeah. analogs on it. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I had the controllers before the analogs and remember having to get them. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Not knowing how important the analogs would be from that point forward yeah. and never going back. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I, I mean, it's 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 a shame in that th this ape escape is just gone and dead because it's something that I feel like in a world 
where this we love these cute things. I don't know why. Yeah, I have I've known people who I've recommended Ape Escape who like platformers, but that was one that they missed out on. Where I tell them to play it, they get their hands on it, and they're just like, dude, this is one of the best platformers I've ever played. This is so satisfying and just fun to play to catch yeah. these stupid little monkeys. <laughs> it's so addicting. Why haven't they made a, a new one? Yeah, it's dumb. Now, moving on, this, uh... Golden Sun. Golden Sun. Now, this this is like one of those ones where you're just like... Every time they made a game, you kind of felt like they were trying to sink it at the same time as really supporting it, you know? Yeah, like, it and was, there's, cause there's only been three games. Both The first two were on the GBA, and then Dark Dawn was on the DS. Yeah. And they've and always... you will remember this game is the game that had a, a a literal giant pack on the back so that way it could detect if it was light or dark outside. Different game. Different game? Different game. No? Different game. What? Yeah. I know what game you're talking about because I used to have it, but it wasn't Golden no, Sun. No, it wasn't yeah. Golden Sun. Sorry, my bad. No, it's fine. I think I've actually heard people <laughs> mix that up before because, you know, Golden Sun. Yeah, Golden Sun. Okay. But um, either way, great video game franchise, huge in Japan. Yep. Why hasn't it gotten like more of a resurgence? Like Isaac from Golden Sun is an assist trophy in Smash. And he has been for like two games in a row now. <laughs> and it's great to see him. I like seeing him there. But it's just like, what do we have to show for it aside from Yeah, right. That? You're like, wait a minute, what? That's it? <laughs> like, <laughs> Especially since like that was like the big push for actually having decent, in-depth, like turn-based RPGs on a portable system, which the GBA was pretty good for it. But... What separated uh, Golden Sun from the others is that most of the the RPGs on the GBA were ports. Yeah, they had great ports of like the original Final Fantasy games. That's how I played like the yeah. Old Final I Fantasy played a games. lot. I played Final Fantasy uh, three, four, five, and I think six. That One way. through six was pretty much like yeah. played on the GBA for yeah. me because there were good ports, but there were very few that like actual had original IPs. Yeah, and that was a big one. Exactly. More. <laughs> Where's the other one? More. Uh, yeah, that's just one of those ones that you're just like, eh, why did what? Why do like? It felt it felt like one of those Disney projects where they like put it out, but they don't want it to win, mm-hmm. which is weird, you know. Like, and you're like, or like Treasure Planet. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like or Black Cauldron, where they like we put it out, but oh god, well, don't look at it. Well, know? Black Cauldron's bad though. Yeah, yeah, but that's, I'm just saying, Black Cauldron's not good. <laughs> Let's see. Next up is just kind of an umbrella. It's just Valve. Valve. Just, just Valve in general. Just Valve. Where are my third games? <laughs> and I know with Half-Life, we're getting like Half-Life Alex, but I'm yeah. of two minds about that. Because if it's actually like the next Half-Life game, like straight up, they're just yeah. calling it, uh, giving it a subtitle instead of calling it three, fine. But the fact that it's VR only, fuck off. <laughs> and then if it's not, and it's just kind of a spinoff, Fuck off, stop wasting my time. <laughs> so, like, either way, I don't win. Yeah, and and it's one of those things where uh, it, it, they just literally are just not making games over there. Like, they went yeah. from being one of the best developers around to being like, you want another game? We don't do that we don't anymore. We do that. All we do, is, all we do is manage Steam. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need. That's all, that's all, that's all the money. That's where all the money's coming from. All we from. do is put it on sale Just and like, you buy but, it. But it's like, but guys, you make such good games. I love both Team Fortress games, especially the second one. I love both Portal games. I like the Left 4 Dead games. Yeah, all of them need threes. Yeah, every it single one. one. <laughs> What is the curve? What is there just like a thing with threes over there? Like, what's the deal? They're like, we only do two. And, and Half Life, especially, was always the big one because it left open ended and we yeah. never resolved this damn plot. <laughs> At least with Portal 2, they were mostly self contained. Yeah. And by the time you get to the end of two, you don't really need another one. No. But. But at least it would be, be nice if they did a three. But a like, Team Fortress three would be a blast. Yeah, it'd be it would be fun to give some Overwatch or something like that a run for its money. I don't know if that, but that's the thing is, who knows if they'll if that they think that's profitable anymore. And, then, and that's the whole thing with yeah. Valve is all of their games. As much as we all love them in their eyes, they're like. Is it profitable to try to develop these games? You know, like, I mean that's like, true. But the longer you made them, the longer you wait on it, the worse it gets. Yeah, exactly. And so we can hope that Half Life Alex is three, but 
Uh, like you said, it's a little bit classist if it's all Leon VR. <laughs> it's all Leon VR. I'm not getting a VR system. Yeah, just I'm not getting a fucking VR system. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, like, but it, it, it's it's just sad because mm-hmm. it's a whole company that's sitting on some of the best video game IPs out there and they just sit on them. Like, we got Portal bridge constructor that's the latest portal game yeah yeah and that's, it's not even so much like a portal game as more it's sort of like a collaboration like cadence of hyrule yeah is, right yeah. like one of those exactly and that's cool but that's not what i want <laughs> but it's cool but it's not but what it's i want cool. It's cool <laughs> so the next one i believe i think these next three are gonna be these last three are gonna be like near to and dear to my heart <laughs> just me all about me sorry frank <laughs> sorry, Frank. Sorry about that. Uh, next one is Legacy of Kane. Uh, yes, you you are a big fan. This is one of the things you need to know about Deshaun. It's Legacy of Kane. I love the Legacy of Kane games. <laughs> it is like a personal biased favorite like take on vampires for me. Yeah. It is like a vampire thing. Um, it and like Metal Gear Solid back in the day on the PS1 was like the first thing that'd be like, wow. Games can tell stories just like movies. <laughs> it's like that in MGS1 were just like, holy, holy shit, shit, this is dope. <laughs> and they were all written well. I mean, it helps that they had Amy Hennig like yeah. writing in them and having such oversight on them. She later would go on to like write the Uncharted games nice. and stuff. So she's been in the industry for a while. And the last game we had was Legacy of Kane Defiance. And... It sure was an ending, but it wasn't really a satisfying one. It was just more, it was one of those endings where it's just like, if it has to end here, it can. Yeah. But we don't want it to end here. Yeah. Like one of those. Yeah, exactly. And everyone wanted more, and it's just been absolute silence. Meanwhile, Crystal Dynamics, same company as Tomb Raider. Ooh. Oh, they love rebooting Tomb Raider. They've yeah, done they that do. like three times three already. Three times. But fucking silence on the Legacy of Kane <laughs> games. So I, that's one of those things you're going to have to sit me down and play those games because I know you have original copies of those games. I'm going to have yes, to like, sit down and play those games because mm-hmm. like, you definitely love those games. Why haven't I played them? You know, like <laughs> I don't know for sure if they would like really be your bag. I think Soul Reaver especially I think might be a little too hard for you. What and I'm not saying you. I'm not what saying the you, fuck? bitch. What you trying to say? I'm not what saying, you trying to I'm say? I'm saying you, bitch. <laughs> But there's like a lot of puzzle solving in it, and it drives me nuts. So I it'll can, drive you I, nuts. I do. I do sometimes hate. And the it's puzzle one of those solve. things where like <laughs> it doesn't hold your hand at all. Yeah. It's like if you don't know where to go, you're gonna figure it out. Yeah. We're not gonna tell you what to do. You need to figure out what you need to do. Shit. That's how I was raised. <laughs> I, I had a guidebook for my Legend of Zelda game. Majora's Mask. Deshaun was just like. I will mess everything up until I get it. Yep, I'm just going to bang my head against the wall until the wall falls down. (laughs) When are you going around the wall? No. (laughs) No. No. Uh, Next one up is Chrono. Chrono. The Chrono. Well, I would call it a franchise. Is is two games a franchise? (laughs) But everyone has wanted a third Chrono game for years. There's Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. Yes. The original being on the SNES and Chrono Cross being on the PS1. Both great games. Both very different games. This is one of those games that I know as a gamer I'm missing out by having never played this series. I have no nostalgic attachment to Chrono Trigger because I actually never played it until we were in college. Really? I I emulated it on my PC. (laughs) Because I didn't have anything to play it on. I have the DS version now. But... It was one of those like essential RPGs because I'm such a big <laughs> RPG fan that yeah. you have to play. And having no nostalgic attachment for it and playing it for the first time is just like this is literally one of the best RPGs I've ever played. Nice. It's so good. Okay. And plus well, you're gonna have to dive in. Much like Dragon Quest, Akira Toriyama does the character design. So if you're big into Dragon Ball, you're it's just pretty like, great. Sick. <laughs> it is sick. And uh yeah, that's that's one of those ones that I feel Everybody I've ever heard who's played the games has been like, why is there not more of these? You know, yeah. Like, and like then everybody the, um, I've ever talked to. And then another problem is like just availability as far as ports are concerned. Yeah. For Chrono Cross, you can only get it on PS1. So you're either buying a PS1 copy or you're getting it off the PlayStation Store for PS3 off like a PS1 classic. Yeah. And then for uh, Trigger, there was the SNES version and the DS version. Every other version of the game is 
garbage. Yeah, because I thought they had it on phone, and I thought there was a switch. Version. They had the um, no Not switch sure. yet. They had it on mobile, and yeah, it was they had it mobile. really bad. Yeah. Then they put it on Steam, which yeah. is just the mobile port. Yeah. So bad. Yeah. And yeah. then that's been it. And because the SNES Classic never put it on there either. There's uh, not really a the last good port of the game is on the fucking DS. That's wild. And I mean, I have it, but I'm not <laughs> going to tell you. You need to get a DS specifically to play this game. <laughs> so availability is also an issue. Yeah. So uh, it, the last on your list here. Uh, wait, before is it Jack and Dexter? Because we didn't bring up Jack and Dexter, did we? Um, Jack and Dexter, we can talk about. Yeah, I feel like. We, I think we both are in agreement that Jack and Dexter doesn't exactly need another game. They yeah. wrapped it up, but it's one of those series that could have gone on forever. Certainly. I feel like Ratchet and Clank has beaten the fucking dead horse over and over again. And Jack yeah, and Dexter really was like, okay, bye. Yeah, and that definitely stems from like Naughty Dog knowing when to move on. Yeah. Like they made three Crash games, then they made a racing game, and like, we're done. Moving on to Jack <laughs> and Dexter. It. We, they made four Jack and Daxter games, one of which was also another racing game, which everyone thought was a pattern. Everyone was just like, are we going to get an Uncharted racing game? <laughs> <laughs> are we going to get a Last of Us Last racing Last of Us game? racing game? Uh, God, and they just morbid. <laughs> And they just knew when to move on. Just like, we've done all we can for it. We want to explore new ideas. Like, they pretty much had to be convinced to do Uncharted 4 to begin with. Yeah. Like, they wanted to just end it at 3. They had to be convinced. And Jack and Daxter is one of those things where, like, yeah, it was three really good games and a good spinoff on the PSP. Daxter was actually really good. Yeah. And then one... But the thing is, they tried to do a four. It just wasn't Naughty Dog, and it was bad. Yeah. Everyone doesn't want to talk about it, but there was a game called Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier, which came out on PSP, was effectively supposed to be a Jack 4, and it was bad bad <laughs> so like one chance you had one chance once naughty dog was gone you yeah. already screwed it up yeah you ruined it and it's just one of those things that was like you know what we should have just left well enough alone yeah we just pretend it doesn't exist and that's the thing is that i maybe someday maybe we could get a nice like like a, a real jack and dexter like remake that would look really really nice yeah you know, i wouldn't like mind it i certainly really well get it. But if they ever, even if they did like a soft reboot, I wouldn't mind. It yeah. might actually help the whole like stark contrast between the first and second game. And being like, like hey, we're like, just like jumping we're just around. Like, we're just and like, like being like, like let's platformer. shoot people in the fucking face. Yeah. You know, like and you're like, whoa. How many sequels take that sudden a turn <laughs> into a completely different genre? But it's just one of those things where. I don't know. I think I'm all right with where it is. Yeah. It's one of those things that it's dead. But it might be nicely buried, yeah. <laughs> you know. Like so, and I feel like, like I feel like other things deserve like the stuff we've talked about on the list so far. Kind of deserve that like shot in the arm. Yeah, more. yeah. Like but, it, it had its trilogy, and it was a good trilogy. Don't push it. I could push it. Yeah. <laughs> you could, you could push, push a little bit. <laughs> Just push a little bit. You don't have to, but I could push. <laughs> so this last one on my list is. I had to save this for last because this has been like hanging over my head for years. <laughs> is Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah, I, I, I play. I've played a bit of Knights of the Old Republic. Have not beaten it or anything like that, but I, I definitely played the game, and it's it's a great game. I fell in love hard with those first two games. Like that was for the, I would say probably my favorite Star Wars thing. Yeah, I loved all the Old Republic lore. I preferred like the characters there. I liked what they did with how like the Sith Empire was still around. Yeah, it's sick. so Siths weren't just like two guys. It was just like a whole Sith Empire to deal with the characters, the different sort of technology and stuff like that. Like that was always my bag. Yeah, and two leaves off on a fucking cliffhanger. And we never got a third game. I know they made like the old Republic MMO, but I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> I want an actual third game. But then now EA has the rights to Star Wars, so even if we did get like a KOTOR 3, it'd probably oh, be, it'd be like, trash. like trash. If trash. Battlefront is any indication. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, um, what's the new one? The last Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order. And I hear that's good, but also a buggy mess. And I hear that, you know, they, they tried there, they actually did something, but like. At the same time, I don't trust EA to take it that much yeah. further. Like, and to be honest, I don't know. It's probably never going to happen. And I feel like I sort of got my fix with it when Dragon Age Origins came out because it had like the exact same combat. It was Bioware again. And it's one of those things where it's a hard situation because like, as much as you don't want it in the hands of EA, you don't want Star Wars in the hands of EA, 
if Disney took it back, if Disney Interactive took it back, <laughs> like, you know, what does... Disney Interactive has such a varied record of video games, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, like, you're kind of like, ah, yeah. like, I don't know yeah. if we want that either, you know, like, so they would have to change it over to some other giant studio, and I'm sure they would just bring it into their own studio instead, you and know, And I don't like, think anyone really wants that. Yeah, in or... A- I mean, maybe it's an indication that uh, with the Marvel Avengers uh, Square Enix game, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's an indication that they're going to start handing uh, licenses over to Square Enix. Maybe we'll get a Star Wars Final Fantasy Or maybe they'll just take that, or maybe they'll just uh, do the same mentality that they're doing with the Marvel games now with Star Wars. The idea uh, behind the Marvel games now is is we want to outsource it to big companies to see if they really have a take. Yeah. When the Spider-Man game came out, that was Marvel going to Insomniac and saying, what do you want to make? What do you want to make? Yeah. You can take any one of our big IPs, what do you want to make? Insomniac specifically said, we want to do a Spider-Man game. Yeah, that's cool. And you can tell, because that game has a lot of love in it, and (laughs) it's fantastic. Square Enix, I guess, opted for the Avengers. That's cool. Maybe they could do something similar with Star Wars, where they give it to more bigger developers. I yeah. mean, Respawn's pretty big. Like, I'm not huge into Titanfall, but they do have a lot of polish with their stuff over it's there. true. And there's lots of... I feel like there's a lot of things that can be done with even just the existing IPs. Mm-hmm. But, like, but there's also a lot to be done with the non-existent yeah, IPs. But- like, the Always Legend... Uh, Boba Fett game that was going to happen for so long. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, like, there was also like a. There was also a like. They, Darth there was, Maul it was a. Type there was a rumor. It was too. called. Uh, Dar- it was called. Uh, uh, Star Wars Coruscant or something like that. You went like deep, deep down into Coruscant because mm-hmm. it's many levels and it's all dirty. And lots of the grind side of Star Wars but, stuff like that. Yeah, and, and, and I think they maybe took all those ideas and were like, "You want?" But one of those things were like. <laughs> It's almost surprising that we haven't just gotten anything yet because EA has Bioware. Yeah. EA has Star Wars. Yep. Bioware made the first, the first KOTOR game. Obsidian made the second one. Obsidian's busy with Outer Worlds right now, which I hear is really good. I'll get yeah. it at some point when it gets cheaper. Yeah, here it's fun. Uh, I'm excited for the Switch port of Outer yeah. Worlds. Uh, but uh, the, 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 yeah, with Knights of the Old Republic, it's kind of one of those things where you, you're like, this is obviously a giant cash cow yeah and it was the it was the game that got me into more like western style rpgs because before that i was primarily like japanese rpgs yeah and just like the different sort of style it's almost like a completely different genre almost it is and just the idea of like the absolute freedom what do you want to do do you want to be more blasty blasty (laughs) do you want to be a jedi or a sith yeah he's like but if you go to the dark side you get all the cool powers (laughs) It's like you get to pick the color of your lightsaber, get to pick your character's appearance, just the freedom. Just let me have my Star Wars OCs, but not in the MMO, because I don't care about MMOs. <laughs> yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. I, I do like a good MMO, but I see what you mean in, like, you. nothing feels special in an MMO. Exactly. You're like, you're like, oh, we are all the chosen one. Let's go out and fucking go save the fucking world. Let's go do a raid. Together. <laughs> <laughs> we are all the chosen ones, and together the chosen ones will kill it. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, ah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I get what you're saying, and I would, you know, it would be nice to be like a a kind of like Skyrim, but Knights of the Old Republic yeah, type of thing. It's, you know, it's like, annoying. It's it's so annoying. I'm yep. still... I'm still, like, burned from, like, not getting KOTOR 3 and Pandemic never getting to finish their Battlefront 3 from back in the day because it was going to be gigantic. It was supposed to be designed for PS3 and 360 at the time. It was going to be much bigger than the original two games. You can still actually find, like, unfinished footage of it. They were going to add, like, stuff original to that game. Like, they actually... One of the developers that worked on the game before it uh, got shelved actually put out concept art that they were going to have Leia as a Jedi, as a playable nice. character, nice. stuff like that. And they, of course, awesome. they had to put that out. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah, right. They're like, hey, <laughs> so it's just like you know, we had ours, and it's just like, oh, it just makes me even sadder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it definitely makes you sad when they're, they're like Battlefront uh, one and the of the reboots was not good, and two. <sighs> Was what is is a mess and is still a mess. And it's like, like a, sure, there's good things, it's a but it's, it's still a mess to even have the Battlefront name because those first two games were like incredible. Yeah, truly incredible. It's really sad that like that, that all these like 
Star Wars things are just being strangleholded by EA. Yeah. And, and especially Knights of the Old Republic. Um, and it's wild. We even got Jedi Outcast. Like, as a yeah. remake, that was wild. That like, was, as a port. Like, like, as a port on the Switch. And I still haven't grabbed that. And I will, because that was... It's on sale was, right now for, like, eight bucks. That game like, was also wild. the shit back in the day. I'll probably buy it when I get home. <laughs> it's, just, it's just wild. Like, it's one of those things where you're watching this company just bundle these things. You mm-hmm. know, just, like, bungle it. Just fucking just drop the ball. Fumble all over I mean, I hope, like, Fallen Order is the step in the right direction. Yeah. Because I know... they realize that I know Disney, an actual serious Star Wars I know Disney work. was not happy about, like, the fallout for Star Wars Battlefront 2. And yeah. I think that might be why EA doesn't have as much as their grubby little hands on Fallen Order. Or, like, shitty business practices or, like, microtransactions or garbage Yeah, like right. That. It's because Disney's, like, watching over their shoulder, like... <laughs> It won't have this, will it? <laughs> or more like, it won't have this, will it? Like, oh, oh. <laughs> don't make me come over there. I'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, like, no, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I, that concludes pretty much our list of yeah, dead the franchises that, uh, that really need some love. You know, like, and as much as, you know, like, as much as we say it, you know, all it takes is people being like, hey, I want that shit, you know, like, and uh, if you go out there and say, I want that shit. Yeah, because believe me, the moment a company sniffs that, like, oh, they'll give us money, make it so they can give us money. (laughs) I want that money. (laughs) Please give us that money. Mm -hmm. So, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Please check out... Our many articles and other podcasts on uh, galaxyofgeek.com. Check us out wherever podcasts are, uh, are host, wherever you listen. And uh, and then please uh, subscribe, like, you know, comment down below, like our Facebook page. Yeah, like again, it depends on where you are. <laughs> wherever you are. On the million platforms we're on now, but whatever you can do to support the show, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope... Hope uh, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. Adios.